and let's take a look at the five number summary and box plots. First off, uh, exploratory data analysis. This is a process of using statistical tools such as graphs, measures of center, and measures of variation to investigate data sets in order to understand their important characteristics. Sometimes you have this huge chunk of data and to wrap your mind around numbers is hard. So you use uh, these tools to try to understand a little bit better what's going on. Now one of the tools we use is a five number summary and this consists of your smallest data value, uh, your first quartile, Q1, your median, which is also Q2, um, your third quartile, Q3, and your largest data value. Now to um, create a five number summary, um, we'll come back to these steps actually. Let me come down here and uh, we're going to do this problem. Okay. So we got these numbers. Our first step, enter data into um, L1. So um, to enter data in, we're going to go to our calculator, we'll press our stat button, we'll do enter on edit. I'm going to clear these out. Um, you can press delete over and over to clear those out. A lot of numbers in there. I was going for the safe way of clearing those out. <laughs> Didn't realize I'd have to press delete a thousand times. Okay. And we'll put in our numbers. 23, so 23 enter, 8 enter, 51 enter, 42 enter, 72 enter, 33 enter, 2 enter, 15 enter, 21 enter, 13 enter, 17 enter, 4 enter, 5 enter, 8 enter, 9 enter. Okay. Now over here, I say enter data in Del 1. Uh, it's implied anytime you get your data input in, they go ahead and exit out. So you will do a second mode to exit out. Okay. Then step 2. It says stat button, choose calc, choose one of our stats, press enter, and press enter again. So we'll press our, let me clear that out, we'll press our stat button, right arrow to calc, and one of our stats is already selected, so we'll press enter on that, and then we'll press enter again. Now it assumes that um, you put your numbers into L1, so if you put them somewhere else then you have to um, put in whatever list when you do the one of our stats. Now this doesn't tell you, but it says this will give you the five number summary, and how to get that is your down arrow and uh, the last five numbers are your five number summary. So let me write those down. So for our first example, we have um, 2, comma, 8, comma, 15, comma, 33, comma, 72. Now you typically don't have to label these. If it asks you to find a five number summary, it's always this order. This is the min, this is the max, this is Q1, this is Q2, and this is Q3. And Q2 is also your median. So anyway, that's our, that's our five number summary. And this tells you this, what each one is. Okay, now box plot. This is a graph of a data set that consists of a line extending from the minimum value to the maximum value and a box of lines drawn to first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. Let me create a box plot based upon this data, just to show it. Now our largest number is 72, so I'm going to come over here if I was doing this by hand and I'm just going to put like 80. I want to choose a number I can easily divide by 2, and that would be 20, and this would be 60. Maybe here would be 10, and this would be 30. Okay, so our min is 2. So I come here, and I'll put a vertical line at 2. Our max is 72. 
here would be 70, so 72, maybe right there. No, it should um, be the same height. And then uh, Q1, 8, we'll put a um, smaller vertical line. 15, we put another vert smaller vertical line. And at Q3, 33, we put another, another one, like that. And then you draw a box like this around Q1, Q2, and Q3. And then you draw a horizontal line going out to the min and max like that. And that would be our box plot by hand. They're not they're not r hard. Uh, just get a rough rough uh, item on that. Probably easier than going to your calculator to be honest. But we can do it on our calculator. It says put list in L1. Um, then second uh, button Y equals. Enter on one plot one. Choose these options on the fifth graph L1 one. Zoom then choose zoom stat and enter. Then trace to view the files, or view the values. Sorry. Now I will show this uh, with some data, so we'll we'll go, we'll come back to this. Now this is the um, the directions that are in our current uh, textbook, and I don't really like these very well. Um, it says determine the lower and upper fences, and that's just our typical formula. Lower fence is Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR, and upper fence is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. And IQR is Q3 minus Q1. This says draw a number line long enough to include the max and min values. Insert vertical lines at Q1, M, and Q3. And close these vertical lines in a box. Label the lower and upper fences. And draw a line from Q1 to your smallest data value larger than the lower fence. Uh, draw a line from Q3 to your largest data value that is smaller than the upper fence. And he's already referred to your whiskers. Um, mark any outliers with an asterisk. My personal belief on this is is that if you have an outlier, you should kick it out before you draw the box plot. And let me show you the reason why. If I had um, well, if I had these uh, data points here, um, if instead of 72, uh, somebody had mistyped something and put in 72,000. Well, if I came over here, here's 72,000, and this is where my my uh, one of my data points is. Whether I put the max here or not, um, it indicates put an asterisk for the outlier. But you know, even actually, let me go ahead and put an asterisk for the outlier. So here's my asterisk from outlier. By putting 72,000 on there, what my box plot would look like is maybe like that right there. It wouldn't look any like anything because you know here is 36,000 you know here's 18,000 so 72 would just be that little blip right there so it really just messes the entire thing up even if we exclude that. Um, so my personal belief is take out the outliers before you draw the box plot. You know find your IQR, your fences and so forth and, and remove those. Well um, but I wanted to give you that since that was in our current textbook. <coughs> it's much better to do what I did in the example above. Well, let's draw one using the calculator now. So I'm going to need to input these numbers. So I'll press Stat. Do Enter on Edit. And I'll up arrow. I'm going to do this quick way now and press Clear. Now, if you up arrow and again press Delete by accident, your L1's gone. Well, what you do is if you could come back in here you notice l one's gone if you up arrow and highlight l2 you do second delete to go into insert and then you do second one enter and that'll put l1 back okay so let's put our numbers in 18 enter 2 enter 33 enter 81 enter 3 enter 5 enter 7 enter 12 enter, 17 enter, 13 enter, 15 enter, 55 enter, 72 enter, 8 enter, 3 enter. Yeah, let me double check my numbers. I'm not very good at data entry. 3, 8, 72, 55, 15, 
13, 17, 12, 7, 5, 3, 81, 33, 2, and 18. Okay, so then I'll let second mode exit out. Okay, so I'm going back up here. Put your list in L1. We just did that. Then it says do a second y equals. So we'll press, let me get rid of those. Second, y equals. Now I notice plot 1 is already highlighted. Um, it says enter on 1 plot 1. Then choose these options. We want the graphs is on, so oops. I'll press enter on the on, and that'll highlight it. Then I want to go down to the next one. I'll do a down arrow and I'll go to the fifth graph. So I have to use my right arrow to go to it. Don't use your down arrow. And uh, it's not hard. You, you pick the one that looks like a box plot. And then press enter on it. And then it uh, defaults to L1 and 1, which I'm happy with. So you can leave those as is. Now, you shouldn't have to do this, but I did some trig earlier in my calculator, so I'm going to have to go to y equals and clear out y1. 0 and y2 doesn't hurt anything. And then, this tells us to choose zoom, and then choose zoom stat. So I'll press zoom, and I want to up arrow. I have a lot of other options, but you shouldn't have that many, unless you got one of the older T84s. We want to choose zoom stat. And now give us our box plot. Okay. What can we use a box plot for? Let me make this a little bit bigger. So we can see it. Um, this uh, is one method to allow you to see if your data is skewed. If it's skewed left, skewed right, or if it's symmetric. Now again, this is kind of opposite of what you think. If you look at this uh, first graph here, where all of your data looks like it's over on the left side, that's skewed right. If it's in the, roughly in the middle, it's symmetric. And then if your data appears to be um, over here on the right side, then it's skewed left. So for this one, see how all of our data looks like it's on the left side? So this is skewed right. So it's a very easy way to determine that. You don't have to draw your, um, your bar graphs and, and see how things are arranged. Um, very quick way to do it. And that's the last of that... Um, that section. So let me stop the recorders here. Ah. Five number summary and box plots.